Good afternoon. Welcome again to the Bethany Associates Reformed Presbyterian Church as we come together for our Thursday afternoon time of devotion. As I mentioned in the announcement a couple weeks ago, as we kind of redid our schedule a little bit, uh, we're going to do the evening reading from Charles Spurgeon's Morning and Evening on Thursday afternoons as a way to kind of close out the week. And uh, as we turn today, we're going to be looking at Isaiah 41, 9. Let's go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we give thanks again for the day that you've given to us. We give thanks uh, for the sunshine and for the beauty of the summer. And to God, we pray as you continue to providentially uh, watch over and guide us. We pray that you uh, would provide strength unto our souls, comfort our spirits, remind us of the wonderful grace that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Well, today we turn to Isaiah 41, 9. You are my servant. I have chosen you. If we have received the grace of God in our hearts, its practical effect has been to make us God's servants. We may be unfaithful servants, and it is true that we are unprofitable ones, but yet, blessed be the name of the Lord, because we are His servants. We wear His uniform. We eat at His table, and we have access to His commands. Remember, dear Christian, we were once the servants of sin, but Christ, who made us free, has now taken us into His family and taught us obedience to His will. We do not serve our Master perfectly, again we must say, but our desire is to serve Him perfectly. As we hear God's voice saying unto us, You are my servant, we can answer with David, I am your servant. You have loosed my bonds, as he says in Psalm 116, 16. But remember, the Lord does not just call us as his servants, but we are his chosen ones. Hear him again. I have chosen you. We have not chosen him first, but he has chosen us. If we are now God's servants, it wasn't always so. The change must be ascribed to sovereign grace and to grace alone. We who have been given this new life in Christ, remember that there was a time when we were not in his kingdom, but we console and comfort ourselves with the truth that today we are in his kingdom and nothing can take that away from us. The eye of sovereignty singles us out. And the voice of unchanging grace declared, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Long before time began or space was created, God had written upon his heart the names of the elect people. He predestinated them to be conformed unto the image of his Son. He ordained them heirs of all the fullness of his love, his grace, and his glory. Believer, what comfort we have here. Having loved us for so long, can we ever allow ourselves to think that the Lord would ever reject us? He knew how stiff-necked we would be. He understood that our hearts were evil, and yet He made the choice. Our Savior is no fickle lover. 
He does not feel enchanted for a while with some gleams of beauty from his church's eye and then afterward reject her because of her unfaithfulness. No! He marries her in old eternity and he hates divorce. The eternal choice is a bond upon our gratitude and upon his faithfulness, which neither can disown. Amen. You know, one of the things that Satan tries to tell us quite often is the fact that God will forsake us, that God will forget us, that God will leave us, especially after we have committed some great sin. Now, God does not take away the temporal consequence of that sin in our life, but he does take away the eternal judgment of that sin. For that's one of the beauties of being united to Christ by faith, is that we have an answer for the charge of the evil one. Go ahead. Say what you will say. Yes, I am guilty. But Christ has paid the penalty for my guilt. He has made me not just innocent, but not guilty in the eyes of of the Father, because he bore the wrath of God upon himself. And so again, tell Satan, yes, it is true, I am a sinner, but I am saved by grace. And I am saved by a grace that cannot be revoked. I am saved by a grace that is sufficient for all of my needs. And I am saved by a grace that will bring me home to eternity that assurance, that sure knowledge that our God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and that he, again, will be our God, not just in the moment, but for all days. And when the day comes that he calls us home, we have no fear of death, for we know thou art with us. When we hear those words, well done, good and faithful servant, we will know that the Lord means it. And he means it because of who we are in Jesus Christ. So brothers and sisters, as you close your week, be comforted in these truths. Be reminded of who you are in the eyes of God. And do not allow Satan and his minions and the old man within you to take away and rob you of the peace that you have in your Redeemer. For He is your joy, your happiness, and your comfort. May the Lord bless you today. May the Lord bless you the rest of this week. And look forward to seeing you on the Lord's Day as we give thanks to God for such a glorious truth as this. Take care and God bless.